All right, continuing with snapshot. So we want to create a series of process functions that handle the event name and the payload. Um, is that what it's going to look like? Payload. Um, not Not sure yet. Maybe we need a, a test or something. Let's see. The, the events currently look like this. It's one of these things. So you get an M and a P. And this is sent. How? Let's see. The We have a space broker. Space broker is going to receive outgoing event. Okay, so all of those are type of event, and it's simply going to push a timestamp into it. So the payload, so is always the uh, M and P. And then you get a TS, MP and TS. So when it gets to the space channel, it will look like handle an event. And you're going to process event with just the payload portion, ignoring the event, since that's not useful. Process event will go to space server. Space server will process the event and cast event a tuple. So let's look at handle cast. And I'll cast finally gets this tuple of event, the payload, and the PID. And uh, what will this thing do? This thing will <clears throat> update a sequence number, add a sequence number in order to send that to Q Broadcaster so it can be subscribe to and persist to the database. Meanwhile, it will broadcast this event to any connected people. So where does the snapshot happen? Um, hmm. Don't currently have a place designed for it, but we can tell that the type of event could be this. We don't really need the space ID. We don't. We need the message, but most of all, we need the payload, don't we? The payload. Oh, is only this portion. Okay, it's split out. So this is the data. Data contains the message, the payload, and the time. And so the way we're making the snapshot, I guess time is less of a concern. So really, we've broken it up to message and payload. So I think the, the way we're calling it is we're going to have a snapshot, XR snapshot, and then we'll call process event, which will be the message and the payload. Sort of looks like our API here. Snapshot takes 
Oh, it takes a bit more. It takes the space ID message and then looks like there's a bit more in here. Oh, I know what we were doing. We were going to stream this from not live, but to be able to do this asynchronously. Um, yeah, so we have the event streams that are in spaces. We have the event stream here, which can stream you a series of events. Uh, given the last sequence and what these things look like is that this is returning a map of the sequence number the these are the keys in the map the sequence the event timestamp the type and the payload so you'll get a list of that map And we're going to process that. So in the snapshot, let's see clear snapshot. Oh, here it is. Update the snapshot, and that's what it does. It goes event stream, the last sequence. And for every one of those, you want to process, and then it's sticking in the space ID, event type, and then everything about the event, which would include the timestamp if you wanted it, but we don't need it, the uh, type if we wanted it, but we don't need it, <clears throat> and finally the payload. So that's the only thing we want from it. And so here's the payload. Gotcha. Okay. Now it makes sense. All right. So from here, let's write a test. Okay, test, 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 test. Let's call this a snapshot test. Snapshot test. And copy some boilerplate. to um, test um, creates a snap shot. So first we need to Create a space, emit an event. All right, so we have something here that does that. This creates a space, it starts the space, and then it emits some events. And then it sends those events to be processed and then that creates some events mm, that's probably the still the most straightforward way to create this but maybe we want to create a fixture for this okay Oh, well, we'll grab this first. We'll come over here and maybe call this a setup. You can always move this to a setup later, but let's see. So, I think we need to import some fixture. All right, 
So we've got some events here. Let's see, let's do one for entity created. <clears throat> we need an M for entity created. Then we'll need a P, which is a map of things, and a timestamp, which we do not care what that is. Finally, this has a type, which is maybe a box, and it has an ID, which can be, uh, we'll create one, so ecto UID generate, we'll use this. And what else? We have a name, a box, and components, which are a list of components. And components have this shape here. These are maps of type, position, and data, which is an array. Two, three, or this rotation. Oh, sorry, that's the type. Uh, sufficient. <clears throat> now for each one of these you're going to process the event and they're just going to be persisted. So here we're just going to maybe just sleep for a second. What did we do in the events? Here we did this. And let's check the, what is it, spaces? Okay, so we can use spaces. Spaces, actually snapshot. The XR snapshot. Here, so okay, let's say comment this guy out first. Then each what's going on? Oh, we didn't provide a function. No, I have one. Da, 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 da. Process this, this, this. Oh, the function's undefined. Right. <clears throat> okay, so this will just return the event stream. So that's okay. Update snapshot. So we'll say update snapshot with space dot id the last sequence. So we should get if we inspect this, we should get 
three events. So here's our list of objects. These are keys, I mean these are atoms. And you get the type. Mm -hmm. Now we just need it to call. Okay, so update snapshot isn't calling anything, so let's have it call process. So if we get a process with a space ID and it is member, we have some that are member entered, then doesn't matter what the event is, you won't do anything. Likewise, if we see def process space ID, um, well, let's just see what this does. Space ID is unused. If it's unused, yeah, we're not going to do anything there. Attempted function clause. Okay, so there isn't a matching function for entity created. So we need entity created. Can I just do this? Is that the same thing? No. You see, when you write a do expression, you must either use do blocks or separate keyword arguments. For example, you should write if blah, blah, do or if comma do colon. That's okay. Def process base ID with entity created. Now I do want the payload, which is this portion. I feel like you could just hand me the payload though. Here, clearly we don't need the timestamp. At least I don't think so. Well, well let's just keep it this way. <clears throat> All right. So we can create an entity, can't we? Yeah. How do you create an entity? Well, and you create a new change set equals entity. We need the thing for entity. Yeah, we've got entity here. And we'll pipe that into entity change set with some attributes. And what are the attributes? Attributes can be IDs ID. Name is name. Do entities have types? Let's take a look. I think they do. Go to priv, repo, operations, entity. So ID name definitely has a type. And a space ID, okay. So we definitely want, whoa, what happened here? Undefined function def. Let's just check. Is there a way? Elixir 
function head on one line. We do need an end. <clears throat> um yes we need the type and space ID and that should save it actually so you could go repo dot what insert change that Unexpected reserve word end on line forty three. Is it this guy giving us problems? Components is unused, it's fine. Okay. So I want to check here. Okay, Snapchat here gave back OK, which I don't care about the output now. Now I want to see what's in entities now. So we can do repo all entity alias exr spaces entity Let's uh, print that out. There you go, here's a snapshot. <clears throat> good but we need components so how do we get components in here so components can just be saved as such into the data column so if we look at components component we have this polymorphic embed there but Maybe we, maybe we don't need this. So it's a schema, import change that. Derive JSON encoder, maybe we only need the data. Do we even need the type? Elixir, I want a unique Postgres unique constraint on JSON D column. How can I set a unique constraint for JSON column in Postgres? Unique means this for me. A JSON object if every key matches and every this is not possible with your somewhat outdated version of 
magnifier introduce a different JSON type and introduce a different inequality. Preserves the ordering of information by being complicated, at least not efficient. Normalizes and stores in binary format. So you have this and this returns true. Um, you know what? I don't know how to do it. Let's just leave. Yeah, the encoder can just have the data portion. And the primary key, yeah, you can still have a primary key, which is a binary G, auto generated. Foreign key is a binary key component. So you have a field type as a string, belongs to an entity. The field, polymorphic embed, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we're going to comment this guy out and just revive this thing. The field is a data and it's a map. <clears throat> now put. Put type into data. I don't think we're going to do this. This whole change set thing, or remove errors. This was when we had the live view. Okay, let me just comment this thing. And we'll create a new change set. So give this the component and adders do and component we will cast adders against yeah we need a type and data which has to be a map and we also need the entity ID. So we're not going to cast polymorphic embed. We're just going to do this. So we compile. Oh. Cast. And which ones are required? They're all required. Require. We're going to require. ID type and data sure. Hmm? Undefined function require. How did we do this other places? Cast uh, validate required. Okay. So if we say the XR component spaces component change set with a component. can't do 
blank, but we need entity, which can be, oh, it needs entity ID, which could be ecto ID generate. Errors entity ID can't be blank. Okay, then the type can't be blank. The type is position. Only the data can't be blank. Data. And how are you going to give this? Needs to be a map, so that's okay. So if you gave a string, that wouldn't be okay. What if it were a string with, you know, map validation cast is enough? Okay. So it needs to be a data map. For example, it could be the type is position with another data field that is or a data field that is, for example, one, two, three. That would be okay. Okay, so in the snapshot, we'll take every one of the components, and create change sets for them. <clears throat> I think that's what we did in spaces. And we did create entity. Let's look for multi. Here. We had a repro transaction and then we had this multi insert with this chain set. So entity change set. What this used to do was it would cast these things, cast associations, components with okay. Change set. So maybe we can still do this. If maybe this change set can take the data that we're giving, which is okay. Let's let's try this. So snapshot. This is the whole payload, and you just give it to us. What would happen if you just said this was the payload? this test and see what happens. Okay, 
change set. We've got changes, components, insert, changes, type, position, errors, entity ID, can't be played. Okay, so it's all this stuff here. <clears throat> and the data is invalid. You need a map. All right. Going back to spaces with the entity change set. So we have components with component change set. And if you look at what it used to do, it casts. To come one with an entity ID. Can't tell. Oh, uh, here, build default components. Set components in attributes. So given a certain type, if map does not have key components. So this one sets the data. Okay, I don't think we have to set the entity ID if we're using the Because if you look at the component from before, it cast, but it didn't say it was required. In fact, let's just re soften up on that. So we'll cast these things. next two failures data is invalid okay yes data is invalid because the position and yeah yeah the data is not a thing so We want to rewrite this thing. <clears throat> so we want to say that adders equals adders, and we're going to replace its data. Key with an object. So now it's a map and it will have a type that is adders type and a data which is adders data. A kind of recursive looking definition, but it will ensure that the data on the database is an object with some bit of redundancy here, but I think it's fine. Then when we serialize it, we can just return this and ignore all that other stuff on it. <clears throat> so then adders can just do that. And what do we get? So now it's valid true. So we get, oh, that's the entity. 
and it has components. So that's okay. That's okay. Seems fine. Going into snapshot process. An entity chain set is doing this cast association. Create name is missing, that seems fine. And where were we using multi? So we want to basically do this again. Go into a snapshot. Change that, change that, change that. That's the chain set. Okay, entity, multi, new, multi, insert, entity, chain set, repo, transaction. I don't think I need to return anything, actually. alias ecto multi payload payload we do need the space ID on this is there a space ID on an on on component components don't have a space id okay interesting but we definitely need space id here so let's just throw that in here space id is space id So this is not loaded, but I think we can serialize this space. So spaces serialize takes a space, list entities for a space with components, and that gives you back entities, the slug and settings. Um, don't think we have any settings, but okay. Let's see. List entities. So query from entity. Google all preload components. And let's just try it. So spaces. Serialize the space. Put that in the test. Entities, this thing, components is a list with object data is data, data is that thing. What is serialized to again? <clears throat> List entities. So these are just the entities. So it's just the data and then serialize. Oh, we just told it to encode. Okay. So let's jump into the encoding part for a component. 
right here we set JSON encoder and I want okay let's JSON encoder so mix JSON encoder If we were to call derive JSON encoder just before def, def struct an implementation similar to the following implementation would be generated. Encode value and ops to JSON encode map map take take those key values. Okay. If we call derive only for an implementation would be like that except the actual general implementations are more efficient computing some data during compilation so there are more macros explicit implementation if you wish to implement the protocol fully yourself it is advised to use functions from the json encode module to the actual IO generate a highly updated verified elastic always produce valid json <coughs> Okay, so this thing always wants to return an object with this key, but it doesn't know that I already have the object that I want to return. So, functions from the JSON encode module, atom float integer keyword map. Four. Okay, maybe put this. Oh, I guess it's just for the atom. So D X R spaces component encode JSON encode map, and the value is this whole thing here. code value dot data what happened okay so do 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 I just saw encoder we don't need this right because we have this and now our components is data and type data and type very good and that's all you want Okay, so gotten a little farther, saving there, and I think our other tests for the old way we save components are broken. So, uh, but we'll take a break here.